just ahead, a trip to work almost ends in tragedy for one woman after her car catches fire while she's driving. Started seeing the smoke, I'm thinking, this doesn't look good. Next on News 12, how a stranger on the road jumped in to save her life. But first, the clouds are starting to move in as we check in with First Alert Meteorologist Anthony Corpino. Yeah, guys, as we got through the app in just a few minutes. Ebony, thanks a lot. This car caught fire on I-20 last week. The driver on her way to work when things took a sudden turn. A Lincolnshire woman says she's lucky to be alive, thanking the man in the picture and the Lord above for sparing her life. Our Hallie Turner talked to her about those scary moments on the road. This is the 2004 Navy Toyota Camry, just moments before melting away with Candy Smith inside. I felt no heat, no warmth. I had, didn't even have my air on. I felt nothing until I stopped and realized I was on fire. And this is the car right after she got out. Turned it off, grabbed my purse, jumped out of the car, barefooted everything. I look and my hood is melting and I see flames. Coming face to face with the one thing she fears the most, flames. Our youngest son, Jed, died in a house fire on February 12, 2020. I hate fires <laughs> with a passion. She says her fear was replaced by peace thanks to a good Samaritan. But that sounds crazy, but there was a peace. This gentleman comes running up with his fire extinguisher. I believe he's from North Charleston. He's a truck driver, and he was my angel. Candy lost another son last year, waiting on a lung transplant. When Walker got COVID, Literally, people all over the world would message us and pray for us. We had hotel rooms paid for. We would have gas money sent to us. She says Kalik stopping was a reminder of the Lord's direct protection she's experienced through the good and bad. It could have been a lot worse. Again, God's faithfulness, God's timing, and, you know, he cleared the road. And all I could do is thank him. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace and for loving me. In Augusta, Hallie Turner, on your side. Just amazing. So thankful that that ended happily. Yeah. And I guess she isn't holding it against the camera either because Hallie says she's already bought another camera. There you so. go. She <laughs> liked the car. Good people who stop what they're doing to, to help somebody who really needs yeah. it. Love That's that great to see. Well, tonight at 6 o'clock, we're following up on the Grovetown shooting that left a four-year-old girl in the hospital. Investigators say she's still in critical condition right now. We also know that Davy Davion Daniels is facing a new charge in this case, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon on top of second-degree cruelty to children and possession of a machine gun since that gun was modified, investigators say, to be automatic. Tonight on News 12 at 11 o'clock, we sit down with the police department to learn more about this case. A man is behind bars accused of exposing himself inside a Columbia County Dollar General, and it's not the first offense. 28-year-old Michael Stevens is facing a public indecency charge. It happened this past Saturday. Investigators say a woman shopping in the store noticed a man following her. She turned around and claims he had his private parts out and was performing a lewd act. She screamed. He ran off. Says that the first time, though, he's been caught for something like this. We found back in 2019, Stevens pleaded guilty after walking around the Walmart on Bobby Jones Expressway with his private parts exposed. He also has several other lewd exposure incidents on file that date back to 2018. Taking a look at traffic now, we've been watching a multi-car accident on Gordon Highway at North Leg Road. That's the zoomed-in part of the map there where you see it in red. Red line's running right across your screen. Also, the adjacent uh, road there, the Wiles Road, it's also backed up as people use that as a detour to get around that crash. We're told there are no serious injuries, and we're also getting in some uh, pictures from the scene, but there are multiple cars involved over multiple lanes, so traffic, traffic is going to be backed up for a while there as they sort all that out. And and, uh, clean it up. No, again, no uh, serious life-threatening injuries, but multiple lanes shut down. Deputies do want you to avoid this area of Gordon Highway if possible, and we'll update you as soon as that area is all cleared up. The U.S. House of Representatives is slated to vote on a deal tonight intended to avoid a global financial crisis if the country defaults on its debt, but the clock is ticking for Congress to get it done. Our State House reporter in Columbia, Mary Green, explains what the deal is and how South Carolina representatives plan to cast their votes. This bill needs 218 votes to clear a major hurdle and pass the U.S. House of Representatives. But a number of Republicans have said they won't back it. So this deal brokered by President Joe Biden and Republican Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy will require major bipartisan support to advance. The bill would suspend the country's debt limit until January 2025, after the next election, to allow the U.S. to keep borrowing money 
while capping federal non-defense spending. The way the package is, is set up now, if it passes uh, in, this, in this way, again, the two major conclusions that we can draw that are positive is that it does avoid a default and it doesn't do anything that increases the probability of recession later this year. The U.S. Treasury Department has estimated the country will run out of money to pay its bills Monday. So that's the impending deadline Congress is trying to beat to get a deal through. In general, we have seen this type of activity, this type of negotiation happen before. But from an economic perspective, there's no incentive for either party to default. Here's how South Carolina's seven representatives have said they'll vote on the debt ceiling deal, formally named the Fiscal Responsibility Act. The state's only Democrat in Congress, Jim Clyburn, is a yes, calling it a pretty good deal in a tweet Tuesday and saying it prevents a default, preserves Social Security, Medicaid and Medicare, and expands access to critical programs. Republican Joe Wilson stood alongside other House Republicans in support of the bill at a news conference Tuesday night, indicating he's a yes as well. Four South Carolina Republicans, Russell Fry, Nancy Mace, Ralph Norman, and William Timmons, have all said they're voting no arguing this deal doesn't go far enough to cut government spending. Once you dissect the bill, this bill is un-American. Uh, it defies conservatism. No Republican in good conscience should support this. And go back to the drawing table. Republican Jeff Duncan has not publicly said how he plans to vote on the deal yet. If this deal makes it through the House, it would then move to the U.S. Senate. Both of South Carolina's Republican senators, Tim Scott and Lindsey Graham, have said they would vote against the deal. Reporting from the State House, I'm Mary Green. The deal would require 60 votes to pass the Senate, meaning it would need support from both sides of the aisle to clear that chamber as well. A new prompt chair has just opened its doors in Columbia County. This is video from this afternoon of that ribbon cutting out on Appling Harlem Road. It's a new health care option in a part of Columbia County that really did need it. Our Nick Veland says prompt care facilities like this one are becoming crucial as the county grows and waits on that first hospital. A ribbon split down the middle. Start the beginning of the third prompt care facility in Columbia County for Piedmont, with facilities already in Evans and Grovetown and now along the Appling Harlem Highway. It's so important to, to move where the growth is. We watch that throughout the year. We always check the growth and where everything is moving as far as population. Along with Piedmont, there is a doctor's prompt care and other services in Evans, and soon to be the new AU hospital that will sit on 81 acres in Grovetown. Trees are being cleared throughout the area of where the facility is going. Columbia County's population is rapidly growing, and with that come health care needs. And so we're thankful for Piedmont Hospital and Wellstar for bringing um, services that our citizens need in the form of health care to our area. And this new facility at the Pumpkin Center is four and a half miles from downtown Appling and four and a half miles away from downtown Harlem, right in the middle of the two locations who've needed local health care for years. Uh, we've been without health care probably for about 15 years. That was when our last uh, doctor left Harlem. So this is a refresh to know that our people are taking care of. So starting June 6th, their normal hours will be from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eventually that prompt care will be open seven days a week. Next at 6 o'clock, have you ever heard Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on a kazoo? <laughs> they have. take you on a one take trip that you and your family can enjoy this summer. And as you're heading out the door this evening, we're nice and dry. The rain chances are staying low and maybe even getting just a little bit more sunshine over the next couple of hours before the sun goes down. Have the full forecast when we come back. Time and temp. Closer to seasonal highs as we get closer to Tuesday and Wednesday. Those temperatures between about 87 to 89 degrees. So that'll be finally where we should be for this time of year. Morning temperatures slightly sticky into the mid 60s. Our Will Volk is starting a new weekly series called One Tank Trip, so you and the family can pack up the car this summer, go on your own adventure, and not spend too much time on the road. This will be fun with Will. This week he stopped by the Kazubi Kazoos in Beaufort, the only plastic kazoo factory in the U.S. of A. <laughs> ah, sweet, sweet music. Welcome to Kazubi Kazoos. It's a kazoo world. It's kind of Willy Wonka-ish, I like to think. Uh, it's bright, it's colorful, it's fun, and um, it's a good place to come and visit and have a, a little bit of childhood moment. There are thousands of kazoos inside this building. They have characters, an American flag made out of them, a kazoo museum. 
and more. Sarah Barnwell, who you can see here playing the electric kazoo, leads the tours, which start with a video of the kazoos explaining their history. Then later, she'll take you to the back where new ones are born. We make about a million kazoos a year. We average about 5,000 a day, and every other day we have kazoos going somewhere else in the world. Barnwell says they sent kazoos to six different continents, and they're all made by hand right here. Good job! They can also show you how to make your own. Push. These kids didn't waste any time trying out their new kazoos. They make cool noises. And they're fun to blow on. Can you sing uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Do you think Mom's going to enjoy the ride home? Yeah. No. Kazooby no. Kazoos, where millions of new kazoos are created. And new musicians are, too. In Buford, Will Bolt, on your side. A really underappreciated musical instrument, <laughs> if you ask we me. We are starting a band when your kids ask to go. And the car ride home. Sorry, kids, they don't sell them. You can just uh, <laughs> play with them there. Kazooby Kazoos is a little over a couple of hours away from Augusta. Yeah, Barnell says you can visit the museum for free. The tour does cost money, but yeah, one tank trip. Sounds good. Thanks, Will. You know, teams around the NFL are just starting to get going with practice today. Dan checks in with the Falcons and the Panthers as the NFL season inches closer. Plus, it's time to break out the kayak. After the break, we head to North Augusta where plans are in the works to celebrate the river. First Loy and Associates. The Down the River Sports and Music Festival just days away in the city of North Augusta, busy getting ready for that big event. MAL has caught up with Mayor Britton Williams to find out more about this celebration along the Savannah. I'm here at the Sharon Jones Amphitheater where the Down the River Sports and Music Festival will be happening this weekend. However, that is not the only thing that the city of North Augusta has in store for the future for outdoor recreation. The city of North Augusta has become known for its greenway and Mayor Britton Williams hopes it will also become known for its waterfront. It always amazed me, I've lived in North Augusta 30 years, and we've never had an event where we were on the water. Last year, the city of North Augusta held their rocking and rafting festival. Kayak races, paddleboard races, homemade raft races, food trucks, vendors, it was awesome. This year, they're holding a festival that Mayor Williams believes shows even more of what North Augusta has to offer. Not only do we have the river, but we have an amphitheater and a greenway right there with it. The Down the River Festival will be two days long, featuring multiple runs, water races, vendors, and even a concert. It's going to be an awesome weekend. In the future, the city hopes to expand their options for waterfront activities even further. We're in the process of putting in a new boat dock that's going to be a game changer. Williams believes the new boat dock should be completed this fall. We have this amazing body of water, the Savannah River. There's so many things we can do on the water. And the Down the River Sports and Music Festival will be held right here at the Sharon Jones Amphitheater this weekend. In North Augusta, Emma Ellis, on your side. So, something to do this weekend. Looks like yeah. a great time. All we need is some good weather, and we'll get back to Anthony shortly in that. But the docks will be a nice addition, too. Oh, well. yeah. Can't wait to see how that, that shapes up right there along the 13th Street Bridge. So, we'll be watching for that, too. As we go through the next few days, and those rain chances are also going to stay on the lower side for us. We'll have one more check of that forecast when we come back. You're watching News 12 on your side.